Well, hi there. 66 million years ago, an asteroid called the Chicxulub asteroid, which was about seven and a half miles or 12 kilometers across and traveling around 12 miles or 20 kilometers a second, hit the Earth in the Yucatan Peninsula near southern Mexico. The force of the impact was approximately the same as detonating 100,000 gigatons of TNT. For comparison, the bombs that devastated the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki were around 15 kilotons each. So 15,000 tons versus 100 trillion metric tons of dynamite. The immediate effects were instant death for anything in or around the 62 mile wide impact cavity that was formed at the moment of impact. Winds rushed from the area at over 600 miles per hour and a mega tsunami was generated as the majority of the impact was in the ocean with waves approaching a mile in height. Not only waves of air and water, but the very earth radiated out from the impact site. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 25 trillion metric tons of earth, ash, and water vapor were ejected into the atmosphere, some escaping into space, and much raining back down to earth, igniting as it passed through the atmosphere like a fiery rain of meteorites igniting around 70% of the world's forests. Yada yada yada, it was a bad day to be alive. But this day alone was not what killed off the dinosaurs. Many lived far away from this impact site and the impacts of the tsunamis and even the fires engulfing the world. But the sun would be largely blocked by smoke and debris for almost a year afterward, perhaps closer to two years, cooling the planet dramatically and putting a virtual stop on all photosynthesis. This means that almost all of the plants died, followed by the plant eaters and then the carnivores. The acid rain caused by the sulfur vapor released into the atmosphere by the impact didn't help things either. And even when the dust cleared, CO2 released directly by the impact and subsequently by fires and geologic activity the asteroid had triggered caused a sudden spike in global temperatures. So with a massive impact followed by fires, darkness, cold starvation, acid rain, and then rapid global warming, it's no wonder that the dinosaurs and their closest relatives all died off. Well, almost all of them, that is. Because while the Archosaurian lineage was virtually wiped from the Earth with over 75% of all life, two lineages somehow survived, the crocodilians and the birds. Somehow these two survived when all of their closest relatives did not. But why? What made these two lineages the exception? What made them so special? Well, today we're going to get to the bottom of this mystery. Let's talk crocs. Crocodilians are rad. And when people find out that they are the closest living relatives to dinosaurs, absolutely no one is shocked. They look like dinosaurs. And while most of them today are at least somewhat aquatic, 66 million years ago, there were crocs all over the land as well as in the water. There were even herbivorous crocs. In a lot of ways, they were living very similar lives to the dinosaurs. So what was their secret to survival? Well, let's start with the harsh reality. Most of them didn't make it. Most of the crocodilians went extinct. The reason that there are crocodilians today is because some few of them made it. And probably the biggest reason that some few of them made it was because they are poikilotherms and not homeotherms. Homeotherms, like you and me, use energy from food to maintain our body temperature. Homeotherm literally means of like heat. We keep our body at a fairly constant temperature using energy from food to both warm it and to cool it down. This has many advantages. It allows us to keep the enzymes and other parts of our metabolisms within the narrow window where they operate most efficiently. And it allows those things to become very specialized to that narrow window since they don't need to be able to operate at other temperatures, at least generally. Not just metabolism, but the whole body can operate more efficiently as it is always in that same narrow band of temperatures where the body works most efficiently. Body function is in, in, in homeothermic organisms, not nearly as dependent on the outside temperature. If the day is hot or cold, sunny or cloudy, they can generally operate at or near peak performance. 
They can even inhabit environments where the temperatures would never allow poikilothermic animals to achieve optimum temperatures. There are clearly a lot of benefits. Benefits enjoyed by dinosaurs for most, if not all, of their 180 million year reign on the Earth. But there is one clear disadvantage. It takes a lot of energy. The vast majority of all the food that you eat is used to maintain your body temperature. And you have to eat a lot of it just to stay alive. The downside of being optimized to operate at a specific temperature is that if you don't have the energy to maintain that temperature, you start to die really quickly. So in a world where calories are few and far between, your ability to survive declines in a hurry. But not if you're a crocodilian. Then it's not your problem. Because you're not a homeotherm. You're a poikilotherm, a word meaning varied heat. Which means that you don't use any of the food you eat directly to warm your body. This combined with your ability to slow down and go into brumation when the weather gets too cold means that you can go literally two or three years without food. Compare this to a homeothermic carnivore like a lion that can only go a few weeks without food and you can probably get a decent window into how they survived when the dinosaurs didn't. Well, that is to say, when most of the dinosaurs didn't. Because as it turns out, the crocodilians weren't the only archosaurs that survived. One other lineage survived as well. A single lineage of dinosaurs. The birds. And the funny thing is that birds are not poikilotherms like crocodilians. They're homeotherms. Which means that the main reason that the crocodilians survived cannot be the reason that the birds did. So how did they make it? Well, it can't be due to what they have in common with the crocodilians, but rather with what makes them different. Excluding the animals killed directly by the asteroid strike and its immediate aftermath, the biggest threat to survival was probably starvation. In a world without photosynthesis for potentially a few years, calories were hard to come by. Which is not as big a deal if you can survive for two or three years without food, but a big deal if you're a homeotherm. At least if you're a large homeotherm. And that is one of the first things that birds had going for them. Unlike most crocodilians and most dinosaurs, most birds are small. And this wasn't because they were planning on living in a post-apocalyptic world, but rather because birds fly. You might have noticed that the biggest birds alive today are also completely flightless. Some, like the now extinct moa, lacked wings entirely. And that all of the flighted birds are much, much smaller. If you've ever watched a bird like an albatross take off, you might have even noticed that big birds that can fly almost can't pull it off. And this is because as objects, including animals, get bigger, their volume grows proportionally faster than their surface area. Basically, bigger birds have more volume, and thus more mass, relative to their surface area than do smaller birds. And that includes the surface area of their wings. So big birds need disproportionately large wings in order to fly. And at some point, flight just becomes impossible. And for this reason, most birds are quite small, at least for dinosaurs. Not to prepare to survive the aftermath of an asteroid strike, but because flight favored smaller body size. But as it turns out, in a post-asteroid, virtually foodless world, being small means that you need to find a lot less food than you would if you were big. If you notice, the only homeotherms that seem to have survived the asteroid apocalypse were small mammals and birds. But being small wasn't all that they had going for them, though it was probably essential. Being able to fly was also quite beneficial. It means that you can cover a lot of ground quickly in your search for food. And you can even leave inhospitable locations in search of greener, or at least slightly less barren pastures. You know, since photosynthesis wasn't happening, there probably were no green pastures. But being small and being able to fly were not themselves enough. Most of the birds still went extinct, including entire lineages like the toothed birds. That's right. The morning that the asteroid hit, there were tons of toothed birds that specialized in feeding on insects and other small animals. But only the beaked birds survived. Specifically, only the big-brained beaked birds survived. Now, the value of a big brain is probably not that difficult to imagine. Extinction occurs when the environment changes faster than a population can adapt. 
And adaptive change takes generations to occur. For most vertebrates, like birds, the environment changed dramatically within a single generation, which doesn't give you much time to adapt. Genetically. But the mental ability to reason and problem solve likely permitted big-brained birds to alter their lifestyles within a generation. Not through evolutionary adaptation, but by using their big brains. The average brain size of birds after this Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event was much greater than was the average brain size before it. It looks like only the smart survived. But what about the beaks? Why did beaks survive when teeth did not? Diet. In a world without photosynthesis, prey becomes rare. Prey is rare when plants are dead. And between the fires and the darkness, it is entirely possible that all of the plants on Earth were dead. Well, all of the adult plants, that is. But you might have noticed that there are plants alive today. And this is because, while all of the adult plants were dead, the world still had seeds. And many seeds can stay dormant for years, some as long as 50 years or even more. And once all of the plants were dead and decayed, and all of the giant dinosaurs and most of the other forms of life as well, there was one source of calories still around. One source that could be enough if you were small enough, could cover enough ground to find it, and had the right kind of mouth morphology and digestive system to access the morsels of energy that were keeping them alive through the end of the world. Seeds. A food that many of the beaked birds were adapted to feed upon, and others, like the toothed birds, were not. And that is why birds and crocodilians, and also mammals and plants, survived while the other archosaurs and much of the rest of life on Earth did not. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon.